Oh, look what I found. A 30 watt fiber coupled laser module. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Wait, let me get my laser goggles before the safety freaks are freaking out. More laser adventures coming soon. In this video I'll try to find the best motion control system for my new CNC machine. I've got a few interesting candidates, but before testing those I think the most ordinary stepper motor deserves a round of applause. For being affordable, easy to use and good enough for almost everything. A basic stepper motor and a microstep driver cost as little as eating in a mediocre restaurant these days. The motor is a much better investment though, because it has a high torque, high speed, full step mode, as well as various microstep modes for higher resolution. Often one can choose much higher resolutions than are necessary for 3D printers or CNC machines. In my opinion this candidate has the best audio quality of them all. It doesn't have any position feedback though, which means that a step loss can go unnoticed and damage the machine or yield bad parts. This set is a bit more expensive than eating out, but it has ways of preventing and detecting step loss, making your machine very reliable. It automatically adjusts phase current depending on mechanical load. But I should really not be testing that by trying to hold onto that shaft coupling. Instead I'll just use another stepper motor as a generator. Shunting its two phases with a selectable pair of equal resistors, I've essentially created an adjustable mechanical load. Looking at the power supply display in the background you can clearly see the effect. I could add voltage and current measurement over and through the shunt resistors to get a power reading. But it wouldn't be a particularly interesting power measurement because I'm actually still far away from stalling that hybrid stepper motor, even though it sounds pretty bad on level 5. I guess I'll have to resort to other methods to make it lose its sh step. Mhm, mm that does it. Stops, sends out an alarm signal to the controller and flashes the red LED. What makes this combination so special and a classic mechanical repeatability test so unnecessary is the built-in encoder. It has its own dirt-proof compartment, a very high resolution and even a signal conditioning IC. With the data it provides, the motor driver knows precisely which movements are actually carried out, in contrast to the ordinary open loop driver, which can only hope. We too can count encoder pulses, to verify that when programming one revolution, 1000 pulses are actually coming through. That's easier and more reliable than a mechanical test. But I'm not sure how the encoder data is actually used. When configured for mind-boggling 51200 microsteps per revolution for example, even the high resolution encoder they are using is not good enough to keep track of the precise position. The encoder is always good enough to detect step losses however, because that's always a deflection of 1.8 degree. Oh, beautiful. Clean, fused, optically isolated, but they've ground off most of the interesting part numbers which is a little bit evil. Still it has worked really well and it is more energy efficient and safe while being just as easy to use as any other stepper motor driver with a step direction interface. This thing has good chances of making it into my machine all things considered. My next candidate is a regular in this show, the stepper motor driver from Trinamic Motion Control. I've actually asked them for a demo board of their latest TMC5160 which is currently sold out everywhere. Well, they went right ahead and sent a little bit more than just that. Awesome, thank you very much. These will go into one of my 3D printers. And these will be forwarded to Patreon supporters. This, this is what I'm interested in now. The TMC5160 has all the features of the smaller chips we've seen before. Plus encoder inputs, minus the output transistors. And that is its key feature. 
You can choose your own MOSFETs to drive stepper monsters with up to 20 ampere 60 volt. These SO8 packages aren't that beefy of course, but for my medium sized motors they are perfect. I'm controlling this driver with the Raspberry Pi over SPI, which is one of three interfaces you can choose from. There's also UART for two differential or even just one wire. When using SPI or UART you have access to an overwhelming amount of configuration registers and you can send commands like move to position 10,000 and then start rotating with a constant velocity. That is if you can manage to find those commands in the 133 pages of high density datasheet. Thankfully Trinamic is publishing a library of useful functions and macros for every one of their devices, making it much easier to talk to them. Of course this chip has the famous silent mode which they call stealth chop trademark. With its sensorless load detection it can automatically decrease phase current to stay cool when there is no load. Or it can decrease velocity when there is such a high load that it comes close to losing steps. Now this behavior doesn't seem so special because it's just what a normal DC motor would do. But if you consider that this thing is automatically optimizing its drive parameters for maximum speed while retaining its precise positioning, it's a big deal. It also has a normal step direction interface for integration with an external coordinator, like Linux CNC. And with that it has all and many more of the features of the previous candidate. But that is delivered all set up and ready to go with these nice encoder motors. Hmm. Hopefully the final candidate can settle the matter. The choice of experts and pretty much the only thing you'll ever find in a high-end industrial machine. What, didn't you know? I'm talking of course about the brushless servo motor which is not a popular choice in the DIY world because these guys are so expensive. O-Drive Robotics are addressing that problem with their O-Drive. This is the most likable candidate. All open source, made by one person, but backed by a thriving community. The idea is that any cheap hobby BLDC can be coupled with a good quality encoder to create a powerful and precise server motor for a fraction of the cost. The O-Drive itself is based on an STM32 microcontroller and 7 groups of power MOSFETs. With those it can operate two three-phase motors and a braking resistor. It can even do regenerative braking when using it in an electric skateboard for example. As you can see here it's still a beta product but it's packed with features anyway. Two of which are visible right after power on. It automatically measures the phase resistance and inductance. And then it checks the encoder with a few spins. The result is a working but not fine-tuned motor. It's preset to 10 ampere, while technically it can handle over 100 amps. But you never know what the customer will connect to this thing, so it's best to be on the safe side. They've published this beautiful interactive Python script. It allows you to explore all the parameters and execute a few functions in your O-Drive. All within a convenient IPython environment, including tab autocomplete. That's extremely useful for configuration and troubleshooting and it makes this seemingly complicated controller accessible. The end goal is of course to control it with one of many supported interfaces, including, again, step direction for external CNC machine controllers. In this case the big advantages of the previous candidates, like automatic current control and slowing down under load, are just inherent side effects of using a server motor and relying on the position feedback of a good encoder. How much money you're willing to spend on an encoder directly dictates the resolution of your system, so no micro steps and no torque uncertainty. Let me just build something with it real quick. I'm using gimbal motors and KUI AMT102 capacitive encoders for this useless sculpture. Its only purpose is to avoid collisions and delay the difficult decision I have to make.
I mean, all three systems are very nice, but O-Drive is nicer than the others. I just wouldn't like these open servo motors on my CNC machine, catching all the dust and maybe even cutting fluid. There are some in an EMA enclosure, but much more expensive and much weaker. I also don't like how they have no holding torque and have to pretend by quickly driving back to the position where they belong. I guess there'll be no noticeable difference once configured correctly, but the O-Drive is also one channel short for a 3-axis machine, so what am I supposed to do? Here's my perfect solution to this dilemma. In addition to the CNC machine, I'll also build a new laser machine, with a 30 watt laser module and the O-Drive. It's just perfectly suited for fast and precise movements in two axes, and there will be a lot less debris flying around. For the CNC machine I'll use the Chinese hybrid stepper motors, until someone makes a similar product based on the Trinamic TMC5160. Good grief, there goes my free time for the next months. But then again, what better way is there to spend my time than with CNC and laser machines?